Alright folks, what is up? This is one big bug and I am coming at you with Euro Truck Simulator 2. And in this one, as I gave you a sneak peek before, we will be driving the new Volvo FH16 2014 truck. And uh, we have a couple mods on it. Nothing actually major. Most everything is standard. The bull bar, the top bar, the, w the mirrors and all that are all standard. The three major mods that we have on this truck are number one of course the skin it is called blue flame and it's a galaxy themed skin with flaming horses coming flying out and i do not have the second part of the mod i did not install the second part of the mod i was a little concerned to do so because i hate installing anything else having to do with trailers right now and that was the mod it was a skin over of a trailer that actually continues that scene going back from the truck. It's re it was really truly beautiful. It's a well done, amazing skin, and it's just absolutely astounding. And I recommend if you're looking for a Volvo FH skin right now, uh, look up Blue Flame, Volvo FH Blue Flame. Look up this skin. Uh, the second mod that we have is we have an eight by four trend um, chassis. So we have the extra third axle in the back up front, um, giving us more stability and uh, better control in turning. And uh, finally, the, the final major mod, of course, as you can see, are the wheels, the chrome uh, wheels there. I do have like a, that major mod that all the wheels still work on it. And these wheels just kind of seem to fit the theme of the truck really, really well. So, yeah, otherwise, um, well, that and those little LED lights down at the bottom are uh, a mod in as well, those little LED lights. So, there is that. I've actually been thinking about taking that, uh, that off the back because that extra big tank that you see right there doesn't actually work. Uh, it's just, it's, it's cosmetic. Uh, I'm almost like completely positive of it. So I could actually, um, I'm actually at a garage right now, and I'll show you. Um, I always hit the wrong enter. Uh, if we go here, we can actually look at the back, and we can get rid of that, and you can see the blue flame here. You can see the back of the truck. Um, and then it comes up with this standard tank so and I'm almost positive that like has no effect on the truck whatsoever so I'm gonna take a look at the the truck real quick that I'm driving of course um, which is like down here yeah, 600 by 200 liters. So I'm actually just going to do without that big attachment on the back. Um, and just go with a cleaner look. I believe that's brake on. Oh, no, that's brake on. Now I have a load picked out for us, and we have a long drive ahead of us. So this will be a multi-part uh, video that will be uploaded... Uh, separately throughout the day. No, nah, I, I was going to do it. I'm not. I don't know why I looked up like I did. But, yeah, a lot of my mods are gone. A whole lot of them. Like, my field of vision mod, uh, gone. Um, a lot of my other mods, mods that I weren't sure what they did, gone. And it actually really smoothed up the running of my game. But I, for all my smoothing up of my game, I couldn't get past th that one crash area. So I'm hoping there's not an issue with this. These mods that I used, all the trailer mods and everything, I have not had a problem. And I have used them in Truck Sim before. I'll let you guess what we're towing. Yep, we're going to take the tank. I'm sorry, I just love hauling the heavy loads. I don't mind haul normal loads in places where I want to go, but, you know, I just 
want the tank. All right, let's hook it up. Let's get it in neutral. Let's take a quick look at our hookup. Yeah? You know, I don't need this floating GPS. That's nice, huh? <laughs> the wheels match mine, all chrome. That's yeah, pretty freaking sweet right there. Alright, anyways. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's head out, shall we? See if we can get out of here cleanly. Now, so everything else on this truck is um, standard affair. The um, the transmission is the standard uh, high-end transmission for the truck. It's the standard Volvo 750 transmission. Um, so there's nothing like souped up about the engines or anything like that. swing that wide just to make sure the trailer clears the uh, the inside there you know, all these trailer mods I've had I've hauled I'm almost 100% positive I've I've either hauled or seen in truck sim already so I don't know why I was constantly crashing it could have been a mix of things but I actually feel better getting rid of all the um, mods that I did have. And they were mods I had that I didn't know what they did. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't sure what they did. So any mods I put in from now on, I gotta write down what to do. Every mod that I have is pretty much self-explanatory. Or I just know what they do by heart. And so I'm not really concerned about that but any mod that I put in from now on that's not going to have an overtly visual effect or doesn't clearly state what it is then I have to write down what it is and keep a record with me of what each and every mod is what they do um, all things like that so that's what I'm going to do I want to be careful I don't know the physics on this chassis. Oh, and that's another thing. I have a new physics physics mod. It's the same. It's an update to the mod that I had earlier. Uh, and the guy broke it up into two mods. And the springs are tightened up. The dampeners are tightened up. The cab doesn't bounce around quite as much or for as long. So, you know, the speed limit's 80. So let's just lock it in. And, uh, we got 81. Um. So yeah, that it's really cool and it, and it has uh, two sets it has a 4x2 and a 4x you know it's listed as 4x2 but it's for 4x2 four, four and 4x4 four four mods and um, then there's also um, it says 6 and 8 axles for you know so if you have multi axles like I do like this truck Then you want um, the 6 and 8 mod on. If, um, if you're only going to be driving 4x2 and or 4x4 trucks, then you want the that mod on and the other mod off. You can't have both mods on at the same time. So that's something to keep careful. We will be going to the African continent, which worries me a little bit it really does um, just because you know the crashes I've been having lately 
tend to have happened in and around the uh, TSM areas. And if it continues, I may start looking into pro mods uh, for new areas versus uh, TSM. Because I don't, I don't know if they're more stable. Just that they might be. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I should have my lights on. And actually I should have the orbitals on. I'm definitely feeling the weight of 62 tons. I will say that much. The acceleration is slow. actually going to start out accelerating me. Especially now with this uh, uphill. Not a whole lot I can do. So I'm a little drained right now because I spent a lot of time trying to fix that crash bug. And every time I thought I fixed it, it would just happen again. And I just, I, I just had to give up, you know. I tried so hard to save the footage and I couldn't. And I just decided, you know what, let's just go back to square one, pick up a different load, and uh, continue on. Yeah. See, I just don't understand, like, why. Because the area I'm in right now... Why did I do that? The area I'm in right now is actually a truck sim area. Yeah. The area I'm in right now is a truck sim area. Oh, that's why I did it, because I want to be over in this lane is a truck sim area so why it would crash in you know in an extended version of France versus crashing here is beyond me it wasn't a recording issue uh, I had plenty of space on my hard drive and I I just I don't know and it's really aggravating but anyways what I should be talking about at this point is the truck. I am really impressed with this truck. Now, I can't speak from the chassis because I haven't tried the standard Volvo chassis, the 6x4 and all that. But when using this chassis, and this is a specifically modded in chassis that I actually got from the um, TSM website. You know, there are people that put mods up, and these mods do work with TSM, so. I know my crashing, crashing issue wasn't the chassis. Um, but this chassis actually just feels like really freaking good. I don't know how else to describe it. 62 tons, fairly steep climb, fifth gear. That's actually very nice. 
I was expecting to have to go lower. So, yeah, um... I'm just really impressed with this truck. I mean, the chassis works great. I showed you the wheels, I think, that the uh, forward axle actually um, turns as well, uh, which is, like, really cool. Um, so this, this chassis mod for this truck is, like, really awesome. I think I might have been losing control there. I just might have oversteered, though. I gotta, I gotta pull my brain myself in because I actually was towing 40 tons before this, and I'm hauling 22 tons heavy. It's like hauling an an entire another, uh, almost heaviest vanilla trailer. So, yeah, gotta be careful. I know I don't have to stop, but I would actually prefer to. And the truck itself, the Volvo itself, I've been so impressed with this truck. It, it could almost convert me from Scania. Almost. I'm actually just probably going to pick up some fuel on the next gas station I come across. I know I don't need it right now, but I don't know. I like starting a trip with a fuel with a full tank, and I forgot to fill it up before we got into the run. So, probably shouldn't be um, double shifting at all, if I'm to be honest. But I love the look, the inside look of the truck. And the colors are different on my truck. I have if it's still on, I have Volvo FH uh, colors, and I think it changes the colors of my interior. Uh, but it's tan and black, and I think it looks really, really nice. Um, the feel is nice. The drive is nice. The dash is amazing. The dashboard is utterly amazing. With the tachometer and the speedometer right there in the center on that one big dial... That is just so freaking awesome. And then you combine that with... Um, the headlights aren't as bright. I'm going to see if I can find a new headlight mod. But you combine that with... Um, the new digital displays I mean right there it tells me how much further I can go and how much fuel I have and then here it's a breakdown of how much fuel I'm consuming I think how much fuel I'm consuming per however many whatever I don't know the actual what that means but I know it's an, an averager it's showing you the averages of what you're consuming and then they're monitoring the temperatures and then swap again and it gives you a digital uh, speedometer so that if you don't so you can know exactly how fast you're going versus um, just the dial that that's impressive then you get the display over there with the clock 
And I'm assuming that's the outside temperature that they have there. And then it looks like they have like water levels or pressure. Um, I'm not sure what that blue symbol is, to be honest. It's a little small and blurry for me to see. And then your fuel gauge. Uh, that's really cool. And then all the buttons. Look at everything lit up in here. Look at look at all the buttons and man, this is like you can see cell phone buttons you can't use. You can see things for uh, it looks like radios and there's just all kinds of buttons in here. And I wish I could push each and every freaking one of them. Oh, it's so amazing. Oh, I can't look at the buttons too much. The, s the mirrors are interesting. The, the mirrors, and I know you can't see them very well. But they're much smaller than the original Volvos. They're, they're much smaller. But... Um, they still give an amazing uh, view. They still give a very amazing back view, the fisheye, the, the main mirror, and they take up less forward-facing space. So you don't need to look over as much as, I know, I'm sorry I took up your lane, but big trailer, lots of curves, I had to. Um, it's just truly impressive, you know? Uh, you see, yeah, you get a glimpse of them there. Despite the angles and despite the fact they're smaller, they just give this amazing vision still. And look at how much vision I have over there on the left, yeah? You see how much vision I have there on the left? That's just... I'm sorry, that's just wow to me, you know? I'm gonna fuel up real quick despite the price. Um, truck off, and we'll just fill up to 800 liters, we're good, let's roll out, break off. Looks like a train is rolling by here. Yep, there it is. I see it now. Hey, where the hell did you come from? <sighs> it's one of those days. It had to be my fault. You know, it had to be my fault. I know it. I'm not paying attention. It's like, ooh, look at the pretty train. Bush. I promise you, I was a much better bus driver than this. I really was. Well, I'm sorry, the way I drive in this game, you think I, I crash on a regular basis. No, you're drunk. <laughs> Actually, what I am is just a little weary. I am a little weary from, from two things. Number one, from fighting um, that crash for about an hour and a half, two hours, or whatever, however long it was. And uh, number two... Um, from uh, not eating. I have not eaten today. At all. And it's 10 o'clock at night. Just kind of dawned on me. It's like, hmm. I have not had food. So, yeah, and something else, ah, wrong, wrong one, it's up, I forgot to show, there is one more screen on the dashboard here, and that screen is um, the air pressure gauge, which is that lower bar, and I believe your fuel pressure gauge, which is the upper bar. So, again, and, and they're completely functional. 
they're completely functional. So, pretty fucking awesome. I know I'm in your lane. I'm sorry. But big truck and all, and I had to make sure I don't hit. That was nuts. I don't know that I've ever seen a car. I, there's no cars coming the other way. I'm taking advantage of the road. I used to do this when I was a Haleakala uh, tour driver. Uh, you drive up the side of the mountain and, and it's hairpin turns all the way up back and forth. Like you see on here. Only not quite as steep, yeah? And, um, it's not, uh, wow, this is an actual good climb here. Fourth? Fourth. I gotta be careful. I think I brushed the guardrail. I don't know that I want to shift again yet. Try fifth. Yeah, it'll do fifth on this part. But when I was a Haleakala bike tour driver, uh, people used to sleep on the way up because we do sunrise tours, take people up to the top of the mountain to watch the sunrise. And to smooth out the hairpin corners, I used to drive them almost like racing to allow myself to um, to allow myself to take the corners and get up the mountain a little faster because you wouldn't believe how pressured it was to get up there and get into position and all this stuff as soon as possible. Um, there was a, a, a lot of um, pressure for that. Um, so it allowed me to get up the mountain faster because I could take the corners faster um, than normal. Like, I'd start on the outside, sweep to the inside corner, and then, you know, come back out on the outside of the road. And you'd say, that's dangerous. And um, no, no, because that time of night, all traffic is going up. There's no cars coming down. If you find a car coming down, then something's really freaking wrong. So, this is a lot of country road driving here. I'm surprised. We have not really been on a highway. I gotta be careful up ahead because a car attempted to pass and didn't make it. So, I don't know how that's going to act. The two trucks in the front uh, keeping us in lower speeds. Whoops. No, actually, I want to turn here. <sighs> what did I hit? Oh. I'm so terrible, man. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I usually do better than this, but I'm like... 
frustrated beyond belief. And I always say I, I usually do better than this. How many times do I say that per video? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a tough week, and that, that's playing a, a big part into it. And I know that sounds like a, a, an excuse. It's really not. It has been a tough week. Um, and it's not over. You know? So I'm not sure what else to do. Except, you know, grin and bear it and hope that next week's better. still doesn't excuse my driving, though. I should be better than that. I really should be better than how I've been acting, so... You know what, dude? I'm just not turning down my high beams for you. You're going to be out of my vision anyways. I love how, like, the car trying to pass me is flashing his lights at me. Like he's in front of me. Right, alright. It's almost four in the morning anyways. It's when it starts lightening up. We've been driving for a while. I wonder if we're due for uh, a rest soon. Not quite soon, but not much further. But yeah, I'm using the in-dash GPS as well. The in-dash GPS is, is actually really nice. Um, be careful these corners. This is going to be longer than normal because I'm on country roads I know I know I'm on country roads so much it's like I, there's I haven't had a highway yet and I'm almost out of the first leg of this run you know I'm almost out of the first leg of this run and It's just kind of disconcerting, is all. But it's also fun because it's a challenge. You know, okay, I can't get the high speeds up, and I gotta deal with the trailer, and I've already made two mistakes. One of them from not paying attention close enough, and one of paying attention close enough to my mirrors, and the other one not paying uh, uh, close enough attention to my GPS. Which, the GPS in this truck is really good. I mean, it's situated nice and open. There's nothing blocking it. It's out of the way, but it's in view. It's very clear, very easy to read. Uh, I really like it. This is like the first in-game GPS that I have zero complaints about. I can complain about something about every other in-game GPS. And it included the Peterbilt, which was almost this good. So, yeah, that was, uh, th th this, this is really nice. You know, that, that GPS there is really nice. And if I didn't already say, yeah, I kind of knew that. Oh, we're finally out of the dark and into some light here. So we got some highway action finally. Yeah, but things are lightening up with the bright lights around now. You can see my light tan interior with the black. 
looks really nice. I like the contrast. It looks really cool. And it looks like we're going to be getting on an actual... I, see, this is, I don't know if this is actual highway. As so much as a uh, two-road, you know, two, four-lane in-city road kind. But that'll all be fixed shortly. be able to keep some momentum hitting this. And it almost didn't matter. Still had to take it down the fourth gear to complete the turn. But the sun is rising and we're getting tired. Does that make sense? Again, why I like to drive in the middle lane. Maybe I'll try and mod in the trailer sometime and show you the whole thing, but you can just go check it out yourself. It may also be a truck sim map uh, mod, which would mean it would be okay if I put it in, but I'm just leery of, like, modding in any more trailers into the game. I really don't want that issue, you know, the issues of stuff crashing. Because I really don't know what, what, I mean, I eliminated so many mods from my folder. I think I've cut the number down to half. And it was still crashing. And most of them were new mods. So, I'd be damned if I know. point we need one soon all right let's take a look at our map and see what's on the horizon um okay that's not too far it's far but it's not too far i'm pretty sure that i can make that rest point uh before i start incurring fines especially we're on a highway now so I can even turn my lights off, I think. It's after 5 o'clock. Yeah, we'll make it in no time because that was the big corner. It's just up the road here. Matter of fact, you can already see the blue sign telling you that it's up and coming. That trailer that just went by, the tractors, that's what I was hauling when, it, when the game started crashing so much. It was really disturbing for me. Two hundred meters? I don't know why they tell you two hundred meters, because it's like right there. But whatever. That's where we're gonna be headed. Yes, I hear you, babe. I hear you. We're pulling over. We're pulling over.
Let's see if we can get this trailer in there. A little concerned about that. I didn't see that sooner. Right. Let's drop our trailer. I don't know, can I just go over this median? Or is there an invisible wall here? No, I can just go over the median. Alright, let's get some rest. Oh, and it's raining. Cool. So, I'm going to hook up back to the trailer real quick before I um, stop. This little path I'm pretty sure wasn't meant for this, but I'm gonna use it anyways. I know the trailer's not straight, but it is straight enough. It's in the space. Alright folks, there we go. That is me done for this uh, section of the run. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Keeping our fingers crossed that we avoid any more crashes. Until next time folks, this is One Big Bugger signing out and I will see you on the road. <laughs>